Alright, hey everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to interpret the graph of the derivative. So we're going to make connections between a function and its graph, and then the graph of its derivative. So first, we're going to consider the graph of the function f of x equals x squared, and we're going to compare it to the graph of its derivative, so the graph of the derivative of f, which is f prime of x equals 2x. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so we'll look at both of these graphs of these functions. So specifically, I want to look at where my function f is increasing and decreasing. Let's start with increasing. So from 0 to infinity, the function x squared is increasing. Increasing means the slope is positive, so we should see the derivative being positive, since the derivative represents the slope. So from 0 to infinity on the derivative function, we should see positive outputs. So the value of the derivative, specifically the output value, should be positive, and it is. So we see that it is above the x-axis, those correspond to positive outputs. So we should be able to follow a similar thought process for decreasing, the decreasing part of x squared. So from negative infinity to zero, x squared is decreasing, meaning the slope is negative. So when we look at the graph of the derivative, we should see negative output values. So from negative infinity to zero, the outputs of the derivative are negative. Okay, so we're just getting warmed up, so don't worry if this isn't super clear right away. We're going to keep doing more. So let's look at the point zero, zero on my graph of f. So at this point, the tangent line is horizontal. So the slope at zero, zero is zero. The slope of the tangent line is zero at this point. And so this should be similar on the graph of the derivative. So the output value of the derivative is zero as well. This means that at x equals zero on the derivative, the output, which is the slope of the function at that value, is zero. And just to connect this back to increasing decreasing one more time, below the x-axis on the derivative is decreasing, above the x-axis on the derivative is increasing. And this is because the output of the derivative is the slope at those x values. So the slope is positive above the x-axis, when the function is increasing, and the slope is negative, meaning the outputs are below the x-axis, when the function is decreasing. Okay, we're going to keep going, so let's try to look at a specific point on the graph of f. So let's pick the point negative 3, 9. Now, we see at this point that f, the function, is decreasing, so this should correspond with a negative output value on my graph of f prime, which it does. So on my graph of the derivative, my point is negative 3, negative 6. This means the derivative at x equals negative 3 is negative 6, or the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 3 on my original function should be negative 6. And I can actually draw my tangent line here and check that the slope is negative 6. So we see we go down 6 to the right one, so the slope of the tangent line at negative 3 is negative 6. It checks out. Okay, so this can be a lot the first time you see it, so let's try another example where we look at a function and the graph of its derivative. So here I have the graph of f of x equals x cubed, and I have its derivative, f prime of x equals 3x squared. So take a second, why don't you pause the video and just see what you notice about these two graphs and see if you can make any connections similar to what we did in the previous part of this video. Okay, so let's look at the graph of f and see where it's increasing and decreasing. Well, turns out this function is almost always increasing. So it's increasing for the first part of the function, then it levels out at zero, and then it continues to increase. So at x equals zero, the function isn't increasing or decreasing. The slope is zero. So you can imagine that the tangent line there is horizontal, the slope of that tangent line is zero. Okay, let's connect this to the graph of the derivative. So increasing on the original function means a positive rate of change, and the derivative is the graph of that rate of change. So just keep this in mind as we're making comparisons. I wanna start with the value x equals zero on the original function and look at what is happening on the graph of the derivative. So on the graph of f, the slope is zero at x equals zero. So the derivative at zero is zero. 
This means that on the graph of the rate of change, the graph of the derivative, we should have a point at 0, 0. So it just happens that this is occurring at 0, 0 on both graphs. Just know that this isn't always going to be this way. So I have another example I'm going to do after this one in a different video. So you might want to check that one out just to make sure you're really understanding how the graph of the function relates to the graph of the derivative. I think I've said it a couple of times now, but I just really want to emphasize that understanding the graph of the derivative can be really confusing at first, so it's not as easy as just following some sort of simple procedure or steps. You really have to think about it conceptually. So give yourself some kindness and patience as you're learning this topic. For now though, let's keep going. So if we look at the outputs of the derivative, they're all above the x-axis. So positive outputs mean a positive slope, that means increasing. So since our function f is always increasing, except at that point x equals zero, all of the outputs of the derivative should be positive to correspond with that increasing, except for the one at zero, of course. The output of the derivative at zero is zero to correspond with the horizontal tangent line or the place where it's not increasing or decreasing on the original graph of f. And just to make one more connection in this video, I want to look at the points on the derivative at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. They both have the same output. They both output 2. So this means that x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, the slope is 2. And if we look back at our graph of f, we see that this makes sense. So at each of these points, the slope is similar. The function's doing the same thing. It's symmetric about the origin. So it should make sense that the slope at x equals negative 1 is the same as the slope at x equals positive 1. And we see this reflected in the graph of the derivative. Okay, so I really hope that gave you a basic understanding of how to interpret the graph of the derivative. If you're wanting to learn more, you can check out my other video on this concept where I use the graph of the derivative to tell information about the original function. Okay, well thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.